what is going on youtube how you doing i am up very late at night for your entertainment with a maxing feeding video right now i'm about to try to feed all my ball pythons and i think they're going to take more than just one each i'm betting my girls are going to probably take two except for some of my bigger ones they'll probably take one and then my babies are going to go ahead and take two or three. We'll see what happens. But uh, here we go with a little feeding video. It's my little guy. He is a uh, spot nose yellow belly Mojave. And his name is Milton. Come on, buddy. There you go. That's a one. Let's see if I can get this other one over here. And I do frozen thawed. You can see I got a little bowl. It's designated for frozen thawed. And I just start them off at room temperature. And then I go ahead and, you know, you turn on the faucet. It's pretty cold at first when it's just full blown cold. Oh, there you go. It's just full-blown cold, you know, and I just let them ro warm up to regular temperatures. We'll let those two guys go. You can see up top here, I got all my pins that hold their enclosures in place. Just make sure you don't get any escapees. So that second one there was uh, right in here. That was my girl... She is a uh, GHI Enchi. Let's see here. This is Roche. She's not used to the camera. We'll see if she'll strike. She should be hungry. Maybe not. For the first time ever, huh? Sorry, a little out of frame, guys. Oh! On the tongs. And in the water. <laughs> I just cleaned her cage, but she went poop again. She's been eating a lot, so see what we got over here. This is one of my boys. Let's see if he's gonna ready to go. This is Theodore. He's a leopard. Roche, she was a uh, cinnamon genetic stripe. Sometimes I can do it, give it a little wiggle. Uh, it sometimes encourages a stronger feeding response. This guy has just not been eating for me at all. That's okay. We got others. Here's Odie. He's a uh, pinstripe orange dream from Garrick de Meyer. He rarely ever strike feeds. I think I've only had him strike feed like one time, but he's a gorgeous guy. It's a little muddy, washed out on the back, but towards the tail it cleans up real nice. But he's a good guy. Unfortunately, that uh, complete lack of aggression on this guy is just uh, makes him a terrible feeder. So he's kind of a drop feed, and that's what I do. Boom. I'll go back in there later on, and he'll probably have eaten. All right, so one of my bigger girls here is this, this is uh, Misty. Or she's being called Misty at the time, anyway. She was Mystique back in the day. If you guys watched any of my future or uh, previous videos, we're calling her Misty now. She's a black pastel lesser, but she's a big girl growing. She's going to be out of this tub real soon. I got some new racks I'm going to be making. I'll show you guys how to make the racks. 
there's plenty of other videos out there on how to make the racks it's all up into you up to you and the preference and how many snakes you keep um, and uh, how you're gonna wanna go about that here we go Let's see if we can get a nice angle shot I got the camera on them so it seems to be they're all kind of wondering what in the hell I'm doing, honestly. She doesn't seem too interested. Typically, with my big girls here, Mystique and uh, Cleo, Cleopatra. Um, and Cleopatra is another that's, she's, she's a uh, double recessive. She's very hungry. Whoa! I gotta try to get her back in there while she's got the food in her mouth. Just a light coaxing back into her tub. Don't recommend that. Let's get her in there just nice and slow. You guys probably want to watch them eat, huh? Well, I got a surprise for you. Here in this big tub, this is a temporary hold until I get this new rack system built for um, Misty, Cleo, and then here's Big Mama. This is the girl that I always talk about. She is like the ambassador of all ball pythons. She is the sweetest snake. My children hold this snake. She is just super, just unbelievably tame. Uh, recognizes myself, you know, my wife, family members, children. And recognizes when it's feeding time. She should be good to go. Um, she's my big girl. She's about five foot. And hopefully she'll take a couple rats for it, rat pups for us this evening. Let me see if I can get in down in here close. Oh, nice strike feed. Keeps going out of frame, guys. These animals are quick when they're hungry. And she is hungry. But a feeding video isn't a feeding video if you don't get to see them take them down all the way. So I'm going to make sure I can try to get that for you. We're going to go ahead and keep this on Mama for now. And let me switch you over here. This is Edith. She's my GHI. And she still coloring up. Really great feeder. Really awesome snake. Love her to death. No, these animals aren't for sale. Maybe they're babies someday. But these animals will forever be in my collection. The only one that actually might get sold later on as I start to produce some animals for, uh, for you guys and for the general public. And I'm just a hobbyist breeder. I'm not like these mainstream breeders like uh, like Garrick or Brian Barchek or even some of the smaller ones like Olympus Reptiles and stuff like that. That uh, you know they don't they don't they they produce a lot more than I would. Um, I would just be producing a very few select. Well, let's see if she'll eat again here. I'll try to get her tub out some more so we can get some light in there. Oh, yeah. She strikes so fast, you could almost, like, the camera wasn't even almost picking it up. So that's two for her. And she, you can see, I mean, just in the video, she's a great feeder. That was, she just finished swallowing the first one, and she's right back at it for the second. I think in this example, um, I mean, you can see both genes, the GHI and the Enchi coming out in her really well. The Enchi, you can see kind of the coloration in the eye. The GHI with that wild pattern, the Enchi also washing out some of the darker pattern that the GHI produces. If you guys know anything about the ball python genetics, you'll be able to see examples of those online or with other breeders. But uh, she's going to continue to get just really crazy looking, but um, both really great powerhouse genetics. So she's got that one. 
Let's give her a minute here. Let's see, Mama seems to be working on hers. Let's see if I can get some good shots for you. It might be a longer video. I mean, I got, what do we got here? Eight snakes to feed. So I'm going to do my best. But Mama right here is, she is actually an adoption from a friend of mine uh, that I worked with years ago. Well, not, I mean, you know, like four years ago or whatever. But he initially was moving from an apartment into another apartment and the, the following apartment wouldn't allow him to keep snakes. And so he had to find her a new home and he knew how passionate I was about the reptile hobby, how passionate I was about keeping ball pythons, how I had kept ball pythons since I was like 15 years old. And uh, they just totally Oh my gosh. Okay, so Edith's done with her second one. Just powering through them. Jeebus. Or Jesus, I don't know, whatever you wanna whatever you wanna say. Man, I should have gave her one of the mice. You picked the little tiny ones. Keep giving her the yeah, I keep giving her these small ones. Well, these small ones are actually for, she got two. Hang on here. My, yeah, I'm totally messing up the camera here, guys. Sorry about that. You know what? Let's just, let's go for the gusto. All right, so she ate two. It doesn't look like she wants a big one. But I feed them typically every three days to a week. Well, let's let her get settled in on that one. And we'll come back to her in a second. Holy cow. That girl is just pounding. Pounding the food. Let's see where Cleo's at. So Cleo's finished. She's starting to finish towards the bottom of hers. But yeah, back to Big Mama, she um, she was a rescue actually from a buddy of mine. And uh, she's just a normal actually, it was kind of funny. She was like named Sabbath or something crazy, some rock and roll name. And uh, I thought it was a male for years. He had her for probably about three years and uh, gave her to me. And I was keeping a couple other ball pythons actually at the time and hadn't made an enclosure for her yet and uh, put her in with a male and give you a shot of cleo finishing up hers she's just a powerhouse she i swear she knows mama's like the big girl and she's trying to catch up i swear to gosh because like this girl she's just beast mode i know when she's the same age as mama She's going to be like easy six footer pushing out clutches with like 10 eggs. It's going to be nuts. All I care about is like that. She's healthy. She's eating good. And, um, you know, she's getting the best care I could possibly provide for her. I see you looking at me, girly. You going back? Are you done? She totally could escape. She could have totally like bolted out of her tub. She didn't. She went back right back in. Like I said, guys, these are just, these tubs are just for right now. These tubs are going to be getting changed out. We're, I'm going to be building a three rack system just for these girls only. And, uh, yeah, I think she's going to be good with the one, honestly. I think she just wants to chill and let that get in her belly. But, yeah, all right, back over to Mama. So he thought it was a male. I put what i thought at the time mama was a male with another male uh i had to go to work that day and then i was going to come home set up an enclosure 
And lo and behold, what did I see? But two snakes locked up. And I'm fairly certain that uh, snakes aren't uh, homosexual or, or a lesbian in that manner. They, uh, they don't tend to do that kind of thing like some other animals and creatures do, which is fine, whatever. But uh, they were locked up and I immediately knew uh, the smaller of the two was the male, and this girly here was the female. And about four to six months later, I don't remember the exact number because I haven't bred her in years, but uh, she produced a clutch of eggs. And uh, I wasn't ready for eggs at the time. I let her do a natural incubation style. And once they um, started to... Um, stink, we'll just put it that way. They started to uh, decay. They were, uh, she was pulled off of them, they were pulled out and um, disposed of. You can see she's got a little bit of that eco earth in her mouth from her enclosure. But once again, I've fed snakes with the eco earth substrate causes a little bit of discomfort and stuff like that but it usually I don't have any issues with like mouth rot or secondary infections or anything like that so but yeah she's just a beautiful normal girl there's absolutely like no crazy genetics going on to her got a little water dish that's got to be cleaned out she's pushed some substrate in it I actually pushed it out at the beginning of the video I'm not sure even if I filmed it or not but she ain't good Let's see if she'll take another one. There she goes. Right on another one. See? She still had a little bit of that eco earth in her mouth, but she's still going for another one. Let's see. A little quiet here. I don't want to disturb her too much. This is her second rat pup. They tend to spook a little bit easier. When they have their second. She rarely ever drops it though. She can make a liar out of me right now. See if we can get this to focus a little bit better. There we go. And I love just like how the older they get, the more prehistoric they look. That'll be a whole nother video though, guys. We're gonna do a video on, um, you know, the very young snakes versus these um, gentle giants here. These five footers. And it's funny too, because I tell, like a lot of times I tell my friends, you know, I got a five, six foot ball python or a snake of any kind or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, it's huge. Like, how could you have something like that in your house? It's really not that big, man. It, I mean, you think, you're thinking five, six foot tall and like as wide as we are in our shoulders and hips and chest and all that stuff. Snakes are, are long and slender. And ball pythons actually have just like the perfect amount of girth where they're not like, they're not super skinny and wiry. They actually got a nice body to them. But they're not that crazy big. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just great snakes. And they're great chill snakes. So they're good pet snakes. And then the corn, corn snakes and, um, well, corn snakes mostly. I mean, if you start getting into king snakes and other things like that, uh, they tend to be a lot more active and crawling around and trying to trying to explore versus like actually like just chilling with you and letting you hold them and handle them. 
but yeah I just think it's like the coolest thing I could seriously sit here and stare at them eat every single time and it's always a new experience because you just get you get that you know you get f this weird kind of feeling that like you know this animal's just doing what it's intended to do and it's just really um rhythmic the way they you know undulate their jaws around the prey and and work it down without you know hands it's just I could just I could seriously watch this forever. If you guys have stopped watching already, I understand that it's not your cup of tea, but if you love snakes, like like I said, I don't condone feeding live at all. But as you can see, these animals aren't being harmed. This either one, the snake or the mouse. I mean, at one point it was alive and now it's not. But uh, it was at no expense to the snake. And, uh, and uh, the snakes get nutrition from it, so it's not a waste, you know. I actually get all of my, uh, my rodents local here in the Milwaukee area from a friend of mine, Rex Rasha. Rex, forgive me if I just totally destroyed your last name, bro. But uh, he's got really great quality feeders. And my snakes have almost never refused him. You know, and just unless they're full. Because I think I fed these guys about three days ago, which is why I believe I'm not having success with some of them eating. But these guys power through them. And I enjoy it so much, I thought maybe you guys might enjoy a nice long feeding video like this. But this is Mama taking down her second one. Let's see if we can get a nice frontal shot here. She's probably wondering, like, what are you doing? Buddy, back up. I'm just trying to grub here. Suppose I wouldn't be too comfortable if somebody was like all in my face with a camera while I'm eating like a plate of spaghetti. <laughs> but man, like how can you not love these creatures? Great beginner pets too. Like if you don't want something that's like super uh like needy as far as like care requirements and feeding schedule and you're on a tight budget snakes are amazing there she goes taking it down you can literally have a ball python feed it once a week on a budget between you know a dollar dollar and change for a mouse to uh to even like here, look, watch this. You see that? She had that little piece of sphagnum moss in her mouth, and I just took it out with the with the tongs. She is just such a sweet snake. Now, definitely, do not handle your animals after they've eaten. Um, you could cause uh, discomfort to the snake but also possibly like damage internal organs by, by messing with them after they've freshly eaten. You definitely want to let them chill for at least 24 hours. Highly suggested. Mama? Hey, girly, back in here. See, and my hands smell like rats and mice right now. That's another time, that's a really great opportunity to get bit if you don't know your animal that well. She's fixing her jaws right now. We're getting them lined back up from unhinging them. That's all for her. And I don't know, guys, that's probably all for me, too. Let me see if my little guy here. My little Milton is going to want to go for another one here.
Oh, he missed. It's okay, it happens. Sorry about my camera work here, guys. It's hard to like hold the tongs and the camera and talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anybody who's tried shooting a video himself, oh my gosh, what are you doing? All right, let me get you a fresh one. I got another one down here for you. I anticipate you eat taking three. There you go. Go on. I'll keep it right there. I won't even move it. This is going to be a long video. Holy shoot. I'm trying to keep it PG for the kids who want to watch snake feeding videos. Yeah, I hope you guys understand here. See, he's not as confident in his strikes anymore because he missed two. Snow on your snake, sometimes that's all it takes. I think he's going to, he's, I think he's done for, but we're just going to give him an opportunity here. I know he's hungry. I'm going to go dropping it. Come on, bud. Nope, messed it up for him. That's what I get. All right, guys. We'll finish off with my buddy Milton over here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This long feeding video. We have plenty more animals in here. Surprise, there's a couple that didn't want to feed. But, uh, hey, that's the way it goes. Let's see if my girl Edith wants to take another one. No, maybe not. Nah, she's all good. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Mr. Crawlings. Thanks for, uh, Tune into the Nature's Jewels channel. See you later.